Hey guys, it's Mrs. Belanger here. So today we're looking at another way of how to calculate the vertex um, in order to find max min values and whatnot. So last time we looked at finding the vertex, we did that method called completing the square, which is wonderful, and it works when you have an equation in standard form. So you've got that equation with no brackets in it. If you're given an equation in um, factored form, so where it's already been factored for you, which is the equations that you've been given on this first practice sheet, in this case, um, completing the square, you would have to first expand, get rid of your brackets, collect your like terms before you could go ahead and do that. So it's not the best approach. When you already know the zeros or you already have it in factored form, your best approach is going to be this one, averaging the zeros. So for that first activity, you should have gone to desmos.com, plotted all these equations in. If you haven't done that yet, please go and do that. It is a good exercise. Um, but if you have, of course, continue with this video. So you punch this equation in, you identify the x-intercepts via Desmos and the vertex, plot those three coordinates that you've been given, and sketch your parabola. And if you've done that for each of these, now I will say my parabola is on here using this um, tablet I'm using isn't perfect, but I've done my best. Um, I've also drawn in the axis of symmetry for each one, which is the vertical line that goes through our vertex. Now what you should notice is because these guys are in factored form, remember we had to solve by factoring. We let y equal 0, and then we would solve our equation. So x minus 3 equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0. We already know how to get these without needing to look at the graph because this equation is in factored form. Same with this one down here, if we were to make that y equals 0, the 2 is by itself out front, so we don't have to concern ourselves with that one, but x plus 1 has to equal 0, or x minus 3 has to equal 0. And when you solve those simple equations, we end up just flipping our signs. And down here, same thing, and the last one, same thing, but in this particular case, I have um, the 2x out front, so 2x equals 0, you divide by 2, that means one of our zeros is, in fact, a 0. So the next part we're looking at is the vertex. Of course, with the graph, we can clearly see where the vertex is, but what we're hoping to get to is how can we calculate that vertex without having to look at the graph. Um, so I want you to take a second and look at the relationship between the x value of our vertex, this guy here, and our two zeros. And how does that number compare? So you'll notice my axis of symmetry, x equals 2 is the equation of my axis of symmetry, and that is the same x value as my vertex. So this point on the x-axis has to do with that x value of my vertex. This guy right here, right here, and moving along right here as well. And what do you notice about that point compared to the zeros each time? So what you should be seeing is that it's smack dab in the middle of your two zeros. So you should be able to get that x value of your vertex quite easily. It's right in the middle. Mathematically though, how do we do that? So we pop over to the next page here. What is the relationship between the x-intercepts and the x-coordinate of the vertex and how do you get it mathematically? That x-coordinate of the vertex is just right in between your zeros. So mathematically to calculate it, we average our zeros. So because we have two zeros, you add them together and then you divide by two. That will give you the x value of your vertex. So it's giving you that first piece. You still need to find the y. So once you know the x, how do you get the y? Well, it's just like doing a table of values. You know this x column, we substitute it into the equation and solve for y. So we're going to go and look at an example down here. <coughs> oh, and just to summarize here in simple terms, um, to find the vertex, add the zeros, then divide by 2 or average the zeros, that's what we're doing, and then we substitute the x-coordinate into the equation. So for step one, given this equation, we need to identify the zeros and average them. So the zeros here, it's either x minus 2 equals 0, which means x is 2, or x plus 4 equals 0, which is x equals negative 4. So my zeros are 2 and negative 4 determine the x-coordinate of the vertex. So we average our zeros, 2 and negative 4 divided by 2. That gives me negative 2 on top divided by 2, negative 1. So the x-coordinate of my vertex is negative 1. So my vertex is going to be somewhere along this 
line where x is negative 1. So to figure out that y value, the second half of my vertex, we're going to go and grab our original equation, which is y equals 1 half times x, okay, x value of my vertex, just like I'm doing a table of values. If x is negative 1, now we find y. So negative 1 minus 2, and there's another x, negative 1 plus 4, and we simplify by doing the math here. So y is equal to 1 half times negative 3, simplify my brackets, positive 3, multiply all this out, and you should get negative 9 halves. So in the case here of plotting the vertex, we can change that to a decimal to make it easier to estimate where that goes. So negative 1 and negative 4.5 is right there. My zeros are positive 2 and negative 4. And using those three points, you can smoothly sketch the best parabola you can. So mine's not wonderful, but rough parabola. And there it is. And we've got ourselves a vertex. So on the next page, there are a couple practice questions for you, um, four in fact. The first one's simple like this one. Um, the third one, if you're not sure how to start it, come back in a minute. Uh, we'll take up the second one and then I'll help you get into the third one if you're not too sure how to get started. Okay, so take a minute, try some of those questions on the next page. All right, so I'm back here. If you haven't done this yet, make sure you pause, go try it. Um, but for this one, we have to start by finding our zeros. So of course, we're just grabbing that x plus 5 equals 0 and solving x plus 1 equals 0, solving, and I get those opposite signed numbers. Average them out and substitute that number back in. So what you should have calculated for your vertex was negative 3, negative 8. So if you haven't done that, feel free to pause here and look through the details. For number 3, I don't want to show you my answers quite yet. Let me just throw up a screen here. All right. So for the question number three, it's asking you to determine the zeros and vertex of this equation by averaging the zeros. So to get the vertex, I want you to average the zeros. I'm asking you to do that. I want, to, I want you to show me using that method, not by completing the square. In order to average the zeros, you need to know what the zeros are. In the previous questions, the zeros were pretty easily identifi identifiable because that equation was in factored form. Right now, my equation's not in factored form. So the first thing you're going to need to do here is factor this equation to get the zeros. Once you've done that, you'll be able to move on and average zeros. So if you haven't tried because you weren't sure how to start, pause and try it. Otherwise, stay with me here and we'll check it out. Okay, so this one's just a common factor, multiplying out that, or so ra rather they're dividing out that negative three x. So we get x equals zero and x equals four. Average your zeros, substitute in, and you should calculate 12 here. I've shown a few steps along the way here, doing bed mass, following my order of operations. Feel free to just punch this in your calculator, but just be aware that if you just punch it in and you've got the wrong number, it just makes it a little more difficult to get part marks. So if you are going to be a super fast calculator user, um, make sure you double check your answer more than once just to make sure you've got the same number twice. Okay, so 2 comma 12 here is our vertex. So for number 4 and 5, similar questions. <coughs> Find the zeros first and then average the zeros. So for question number 4, I've got a vertex of 3, negative 50. If you've got a different answer, pause the video, check it out. And for number five, here I have a vertex of two negative nine. This one was a little more challenging in that when I was calculating these zeros here, um, I had to take into account that there was a number in front of my x, so I actually pulled them out, did the calculation here, added seven, and then divided by two. And that gave me fractions, and it might have freaked you out a little bit at first, once you put them up here, 7 halves plus 1 half is 8 halves, simplify it, we get 4. So I've got 4 and then dividing it by 2 to average those numbers. Substitute that in, so it all worked out really nice in the end. So that is it for averaging the zeros, and I will see you guys in class tomorrow.